Normally when we're given our you know, definite integrals, say we have the function or the integral f of x dx. With our typical definite integrals, it's assumed that this function is continuous on all points and it's differentiable on all points. And it's also assumed that we're given an interval a to b that's finite. And so these conditions are perfect. I mean, they allow us, I mean, we don't, we just don't even have to worry about the fact that it's, you know, there's no hidden discontinuity. It's, you know, there's not a point where it's just not differentiable. But see, when, when improper integrals come along, they might give you a integral that looks like this. So you got the integral of f of x dx. And instead of going from a to b, they'll say you're going from a to infinity. Where are we with that? Infinity. And you're like, what? Because how, first off, it, it seems a mind boggling to calculate the definite area of an infin or infinite function. And so these are called improper integrals. And so there's two types. And I'll go over the first type, type one integrals, type one improper integrals, and I'll do a few examples of those. And in the next video, I'll go over type two and do a few examples of those. So first off, what makes an integral type one? It has to be an infinite integral that causes a infinite discontinuity, meaning it just goes on forever. And so if we want to calculate this area, we can have a few types of uh, intervals. We might have, say, a to infinity, we might have negative infinity to b, or we might have negative infinity to infinity. And so, according to the definition of improper integrals, if we have the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx, then that area under the curve is the same as writing the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral a to infinity of f of x dx. So as a quick example for that, if we had a function f of x equals 1 over x squared. Then the antiderivative, okay, and I, I'll, I'll write this a bit more. So we have, we're going from 1 to infinity, and 1 is going to be our a of 1 over x squared times dx. Now, the antiderivative of 1 over x squared is equal to 1 over x, negative 1 over x, and so we need to evaluate this at infinity and one. And so evaluated at infinity, you know, it's one over x. So if it's one over infinity, that is just gonna equal zero. And if it's one over one and it's negative, then it's just gonna equal negative one. So then we take, you know, f of infinity minus f of negative one. So we go zero minus negative one. So that just becomes plus one. And that means our area is equal to one. And so that would be an example of calculating an improper integral. And so if we had, say, negative infinity to b, it's the same. We just write it as the limit as t approaches negative infinity from t to b of f of x dx. Now, this comes, well, we, we get into something called convergence and divergence. And so before we get to this last one, we need to go over convergence and divergence. So convergence just means the limit is finite. For instance, we went up here and we calculated this one and we found that the area was one. But if we had the function f of x is equal to two x, then the area is infinite. So we would not say that it's convergent. Convergent means that the limit is finite. We can calculate it. Now this of course is not being super mathematically rigorous, but overall, I mean, the most important point is that if it's infinite, it's divergent. It means the limit is infinite or it's undefined. Say if you have one divided by zero or anything divided by zero, you don't want to make like black holes or anything like that. Then the limit is infinite or if it's undefined or does not exist, like for instance, f of x equals x squared or f of x equals two x or f of x equals one over, or one over x, then it's divergent. And so it's overall, it's quite simple. Convergent means, you know, comes down to a point where we can calculate it. Whereas divergent means uh, it's just so messed up, we're just gonna forget about it. It's beyond help. And so what this means here is that if if negative b or negative infinity to b is convergent, convergent, if this function is convergent and this function is convergent, 
then we can say that going from negative infinity to infinity is just the sum of these two limits. So let's go over one example. Let's go over the example. We have the function e to the power of negative 1.4x, and we're going from 1.8 to infinity. And so our first step is to take you know, the antiderivative of e to the 1.4x. So the antiderivative of e to the 1.4, negative 1.4x, antiderivative, equals, we'll have, let's see, negative 1 over 1.4 e to the negative 1.4x. So that's our antiderivative. And then we need to evaluate this. We evaluate at infinity, and we evaluate at 1.8. Okay, so let's evaluate this at infinity. Well, if we do e to the power of, so we're going to have negative 1 over 1.4, e to the negative 1.4 times infinity. And so if we, now, of course, the, the negative 1.4 makes it a negative. So it's really like evaluating it at negative infinity. And when we do that, e to the power of, say, negative 10,000 is going to be very low, and e to the power of negative 10 million is going to be even lower. So we would say that this evaluates to 0. Now, at 1.8, you know, if you take out your trusty calculator, which I need to do, then we take negative 1 divided by 1.4, and we go... So we, I'll write this down here. Negative 1 divided by 1.4 e to the negative 1.4 times 1.8 e to the power of negative 1.4 times 1.8. And you get this nice decimal, negative 0 0.0575. I ran out of space. But anyway. And we go 0 minus, and again, we're minusing negative, so we just go plus 0 0.0575. And this is our evaluated improper integral. This is the area under the curve. Even though this continues on for infinity, we know that the definite area is just 0 0.0575. So let's do one more example. Let's do the example, let's see, we're going to take the function f of x equals x e to the negative 3x, well, I'll just erase this, and we're going to, let's see, yeah, so x times e to the power of negative 3x dx, and we're going to go from 2 to infinity. And so for this question, we're going to need to use uh, integration by parts. So we'll take our f of x, our f prime of x. So our f of x, it looks like, well, our x, if we take the derivative of that, will go away. So we'll make our f of x is equal to x. And so this is just 1. Our g prime of x is going to be e to the power of negative 3x. And so g of x is going to be negative 1 third e to the power of negative 3x. And of course, our integration by parts formula is f times g minus the integral of f prime times g is equal to our integral. So if we evaluate this, we just get x times negative 1 over 3e to the negative 3x minus the integral. And I'll just take the constant out since we're timesing it by, or f prime of x. We just take 1 times, and now we're timesing it by this. So we just take the negative out, which makes this a positive, 1 over 3e to the negative 3x. 
and then the antiderivative of that. So we just go down here. So we get negative one third x e to the negative three x plus one over three. And if we evaluate this integral, we get one over three e negative one over three times e to the negative three x. And so we factor this out. This becomes one minus one over nine e to the negative three x. And that is our integral. So we need to evaluate this at our two points, two and infinity. So at infinity, this equals, well again, we have negative three. So this becomes a zero. This becomes a zero. And then this also becomes a zero. So at infinity, it equals zero. And then if we evaluate this at two, I won't actually evaluate this, but I'll write this down. Negative one over three. Well, we, we could just write our integral like this. We would take negative one, and we go negative one over three, x e to the negative six x. Sorry, negative three x plus negative one over nine e to the negative three x. And I have a whole bunch of arbitrary brackets. And this would equal the area. So negative one times this will equal our area for this integral, the integral of x times e to the negative three x dx over the integral, over the interval two to infinity. And so we just use integration by parts, we evaluate it at infinity, and we evaluate it at two, and we will get our area. And so in the next video, I'll go over type two integrals, and I'll do a few examples of those as well.